So it gives you groovy feeling. You know groovy feeling? You get into the groove, and once you sleep in the groove, it gives you a comfortable feeling. It's a rut. Once you're in the rut, it's a small hole in which, you know, two tracks of wheels, if they go, they can't come out. You keep to the rut. It's like a rail, but it's a hollow rail. The difference between a rut and a grave is only depth. A rut is one foot deep, deep, the other is six feet deep. That's all. That's the only difference. It's the depth, how much. And it's a comfortable feeling in the groove. Once you are there, you don't want to be disturbed. Nobody likes to be disturbed. We are all like that. We don't like to be disturbed. So, I said, Islam gives you the answers. Bring your problems. It might not go down well, as I said. But you give an alternative to the solution that Islam offers. There isn't. Now, a problem is posed. Problem is posed. He said, look, is Muhammad a spirit? If he's not the ghost, all right. Is he a spirit? He said, no, he was a solid personality. He was flesh and blood. But here it says spirit. I said, you see the same John, in the first epistle of John, chapter 4, verse 1, he says, he said, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. That's the same John. It's his own terminology. Many false prophets have gone out into the world. So a false prophet is a false spirit, a true prophet is a true spirit. The word spirit is used synonymously for a prophet by the same John. And the same John tells us that that which is born of spirit is spirit and that which is born of flesh is flesh. What is he talking about? Born of spirit is spirit. Do spirits cohabit? Do they? No. They don't have sexual relationship. You know, there's no female uh, spirit and female angel and male angel. Angel is angel. They are neuter. They are neither male nor female. They don't start cohabiting. They don't get married and start begetting children. Do they? No. In Christianity, do they? So no. Though they portray angels meaning beautiful women with wings. But angels are not beautiful women with wings. They are angelic. They are heavenly. They are spiritual beings. No. They are neither male nor female. They have neither shape. They can materialize according to God's will, into any form or shape. But they are neither this, this, nor that. They are neither male nor female. And they don't cohabit. They don't beget. So how can spirits beget spirits? How can you be born of spirit? Because he that is born of flesh is flesh. He that is born of spirit is spirit. Now what it means is this, that if you are motivated by spiritual consideration, you are a spiritual person. If it is material consideration that brought you here, that you know, if I go to Mr. Dida's last meeting, you know, all the videotapes that will be left over, he'll give them out to the people, you know, in the front row. Then you see everybody clamoring to get into the front row. What is your consideration? Material. Incidentally, tonight is the last night you have a chance if you haven't got them. The videotapes of this great debate that took place in America is there. And also an audio tape of an, an interview with Gina Lewis on your R70, Radio 74. That's five, five francs there. Uh, you'll enjoy it. Five francs for the cassette tape. And the others are 75 francs for the two tapes. The two, uh, as I said. It's, and there's the pamphlets are available in case you would write for free literature. You can also do that. The coupon is there. You can write to South Africa. Inshallah, we'll send it to you. So what was your consideration in coming here? If it was immaterial consideration, intangible consideration, a nobler motive, then you are a spiritual person. If it was material consideration, Mr. Didat might give us five francs each or ten francs each for coming and attending his meeting and that's what brought you here, then you are a materialist. You are born of flesh, you are flesh. 
this material consideration, you are a materialist person. If you are born of spirit, you are spirit. Meaning that is your spiritual consideration makes you spiritual. That's the language of the Bible. So, Muhammad is spirit. In other words, that his considerations are spiritual. And his title. He is a Sadiq al Wadul Amin before his prophethood. This title was given by the Mushriks of Makkah. And this title is preserved on his tomb. You'll find a plaque there which reads La ilaha illallah al Malikul Haqqul Mubeen Muhammad Rasulullah as Sadiq al Wadul Amin. This latter expression, as Sadiq al Wadul Amin, is not Quranic, it's not in the Quran. This is the tribute which the Mushriks of Makkah, the pagans, paid to Muhammad. As Sadiq al Wa'ad, the man who fulfills his promises. Al Amin, the truthful, the spirit of truth, the prophet of truth, that is Muhammad. And he guided mankind into all this. He shall glorify me, he will be a witness of me, he will testify of me. All these are the qualities of this one who is going to come. He will be a witness of me. He will testify of me. He will glorify me. Open the Quran. I was giving you references last night. That we in Islam are made to accept that Jesus Christ was born miraculously. As against what the Jews said, that he is the illegitimate child of Mary. As against what the Christians said, that he is the begotten son of God. The Muslim is made to say his true status, true position. That is true glory. If I pick up somebody here, anyway, and maybe I don't know the name of your king here or your ruler here, and I pick up a poor man, a sweeper, and he says, you are the son of, say, Adolf Hitler. Well, let's say a good man. You are the son of, uh, I don't know, the name of your rulers in the world, you know, anybody, Ziaul Haq. <laughs> You see? Now if I said that, you know, if you are not, I'm actually insulting you. You know, I'm insulting you. You see? I must hold you for whatever you are. You are a lecturer in the school, or you are a janitor, or whatever you are. You are a caretaker, you are a supervisor. Whatever position you occupy, that title I give you is respect. Anything beyond, or anything below, both are insulting. And people should have sense enough to know that. Like one French uh, plebeian, you know, rustic farmer, young man. He came to Paris during the reign of one of the uh, French kings, you know, Louis so and so. He was very fast and loose with women. Any woman he sees that's beautiful, he used to, also he didn't have a harem, but he used them. You see, the same way that he, says he took, took them in. Very loose, fast and loose with any woman one of the French kings. And his son, when he came to in power, he became the king, some of this Louis so-and-so. And he heard that there is another young man about his age in Paris, and he is identical to the young king. An exact duplicate. So he became very inquisitive. He says, you know, people are mistaking him for you. Your Highness. He said, well, I'd like to see the fellow. And the guy said, search him out. So they got him and they brought him to the king, the young king. And the young king sees this is man, exact replica, identical, cent percent, like as if they were twins, identical twins. So he's asking this rustic farmer, he said, you know, during the reign of my father, did your mother ever visit Paris? He's insinuating that if your mother did, in case, you know, my father must have seen her and taken her into his haram. So, you and I, you know, we happen to be identical. So the young rustic says, no, says, my father didn't, I'm saying my mother didn't, but my father